My encounter happened in the summer of 2019. It had been one hell of a year, and I needed to get away from it all. My cousin Lisa offered me a temporary sanctuary, a cozy house nestled right at the edge of the Oregonian forest. It was the perfect escape I needed. You know we get bears around here, right? Lisa said the night I arrived, a cautionary note in her voice. So don't go out wandering at night. I'm not planning on having a nighttime adventure, I replied half-joking. The daytime will be enough for me. My first day was pure bliss. The sun was shining, the air smelled like pine and freedom. I roamed around letting my feet guide me. The forest was a balm, healing my wounds, making me forget. That night, however, I was jolted awake by some noise. It was heavy, rhythmic, like footsteps, but not quite, then followed by the sound of rummaging. The next morning, I asked Lisa about it. Oh, it's probably just the bears I warned you about. They're harmless, really. Just don't go out at night. She said it with such finality that I didn't dare question her further. I still ventured deeper into the woods the next day. Taking the same path I took the day before, I went further. Deeper. It was during this hike that I stumbled upon something odd. Trees had strange structures, almost like they were manipulated, twisted, and shaped into odd formations. I was fascinated, and I took pictures of them, thinking hikers or campers had done it for fun or as a form of artistic expression. Exploring, I lost track of time. Before I knew it, the sun was setting behind the trees, and I remembered the bears. I hurriedly made my way back. As I was walking, I heard a strange sound. It was like a low, guttural growl, or maybe purr. I froze. I looked around, but I couldn't see anything. Then I heard it again, and this time it was closer. I turned around, and there it was. The silhouette was tall maybe seven, eight feet, and obscured by the increasing darkness. I didn't know much about bears back then. I'm a city girl. But at first, its broad shoulders and towering presence led me to believe it was a bear. My heart raced, reminding me of that old saying, if it's black, fight back. But then, as I squinted to see it better, I noticed long arms, almost human, and the way it stood on two feet upright was unsettling. The most shocking part was when it made a sound. Deep hums and curious clicks resonated in the quiet forest air. The figure then gracefully bent down, its motion suggesting it was placing something on the ground. Seeing it bend down like that, very much human-like, did it for me. I pivoted and sprinted back to the house my mind screaming one clear thought, that was not a bear. The next morning, curiosity, stronger than fear, led Lisa and me to that very spot. What we found was puzzling, a tiny bundle of sticks, neatly tied together with a pristine feather resting on top. What do you think it is? I whispered, trying to make sense of it. I have no idea, Lisa replied, eyes wide. But I've heard stories, you know, of the Bigfoot. They're said to leave signs, communicate in their own way. I looked at her, incredulous. You don't really believe in that, do you? She shrugged. I don't know, but I do know that I've never seen anything like this before. I nodded, and we both stood there, staring at the bundle of sticks. I took it home with me, and now... I think maybe whatever it was, it was a gift. Maybe the thing, or Bigfoot, felt that I was there to get my mind off things, and it wanted to help. It did, in a way. Thank you for listening, friends. If you like strange encounter stories, glitches in the matrix, and other unsettling stories, hit the subscribe button, because that's all we do. Have a good one.